of what I'm doing here. So I've been on the skid steer a little bit. I'm trying to get this front part of the property organized, okay? We live off-grid in the Midwest, and we're gonna make this area the last, you know, puzzle, the last puzzle piece, the last little thing that we need to do to make our homestead 100%, well, 99.9, .9, sustainable, okay? So you guys stay tuned for what's gonna be going on. So what happened was I made some friends with some guys who trimmed some of the trees around the power lines in the area and they started dropping off mulch. And they had a bunch of piles going on and we were using the back to Eden garden method and I thought that would be a fantastic idea to get this free mulch delivered from them all the time. And um, so I borrowed my friend's skid steer here and I got it all piled up into one great big huge pile. <laughs> all right, so that's a pretty big pile of mulch. But the problem is, is we're not doing back to Eden Garden anymore. So the nice thing is, is there's a couple things that'll happen here. One is I'll have mulch for all my neighbors. Some, a lot of them use it around their house and in their flower beds, and that's fine. They can come here and get some if they need it. But also this pile will turn into dirt. All I have to do is leave it set here. A couple of years will go by, and this will turn into some of the best dirt on the property and you guys stay tuned for that so that's the way we got you guys hooked in for the long time viewership <laughs> and so you can see how this turns into dirt so right now I'm gonna get back on the skid steer we're working on some stuff down here in the front and I'll tell you what that is and show you what's going on Everybody's place, no matter what, there's always like that one ugly spot that no one ever shows you. Well, ours just happens to be the big green and white barn. I'm walking around all the stuff that I have on the ground here. <laughs> Alright, so hopefully you guys can see now. So, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> the ugliest spot on our whole homestead. Now the thing is, is that, you know, we don't really use this side of the barn that much. When I first moved here, um, the floor in this barn was sloped down towards the cabin and it would always flood in here and get really muddy. And then I brought a bunch of dirt in and I got the ground kind of leveled out and I stopped all the flooding. But the thing is, is that other than the buggies and some of my tools, I never really came up here. It wasn't really a, a place that we hung out. Everything is down kind of by the house. So what happens is you start piling stuff up like, oh, I'll get to that later. And oh, I'll get to that later. And then you end up with like this room full of like this junk. You know what I mean? So my goal now, because part of this project, I'm gonna need all this barn space, is I'm gonna get this whole place cleaned up. I'm gonna get the floor leveled and we're actually gonna put concrete on this dirt floor. It's one of my goals that I had for 2019. You guys are seeing me tear through my goals this year, uh, building the learning center, the root cellar, and this project up here, I wanna get finished before the end of the year. So we're gonna get this all cleaned out. We have to move all of our junk out of here. That's why we have the dumpster up front. We're actually gonna go through our stuff and dump some stuff. We're gonna purge after we purged and purged and purged. <laughs> we're gonna go through a lot of this stuff. A lot of it's just leftover building material like from the Andorra roofing that we put on the outdoor kitchen uh, that we don't need anymore. And um, you know, just scraps and pieces of this and that. So it's gonna feel really good to get this place kind of cleaned out and uh, start this next project up front. So the first place I'm gonna start is up here in the very front and then I'm gonna start tackling the building because I've already started cleaning out the building and I got a lot of the trash and junk sitting out here and it's blocking my way. I have the uh, harness and the saddle for the horses which I'm gonna get them dipped and cleaned and anything wrong with them, I'm gonna have them fix it. So that's gonna get dropped off at our buddy, the Amish uh, farrier guy. And then, uh, you still guessing what's in that box? It's right there. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Really looking forward to that part of the project. 
And uh, so, you know, like there's an old tractor seat, right? I borrowed my neighbor's tractor and the seat was all messed up. So I bought him a new seat for his tractor. So when I took his seat off, I didn't know what to do with it and we don't have trash service. So I kind of set it over there. I was thinking of ways I could make it into like a stool or a bench or recycle it. And here it sat for probably, this might be the third year. <laughs> Come on, I know you guys can feel me. It's probably been the third year that seat's been sitting up here and I throw it from here to over there. So it's finally going to go in this dumpster here. So I got to quit talking and get moving. Victory! It actually feels good. I'm, I'm going to say goodbye to it. You guys say goodbye to the old tractor seat. <laughs> And that's the other thing. Once your friends find out that you have a container up here for put trash in, they start bringing their trucks up here and dumping them in there. Ha! <laughs> but I'm actually not gonna be able to fill up this whole thing. So we told the neighbors and even Greg, if you guys got some stuff you wanna dispose on, bring it on up here, because we're gonna clean out everybody's house one video at a time. His wife's pretty happy about it too. <laughs> yeah, they made a big commitment at their house not even knowing that we did, that they were gonna start cleaning out some of their clutter too. Yep. That was nice of you to bring yours pre-packaged in bag. I like it. <laughs> Hold on, you're taking up too much space. <laughs> <laughs> Get a car wash going on. Ha! I'm gonna have to give you guys a full buggy tour one time. I don't know if you guys watch anybody off grid who has a horse and buggy. That's my little two seater that I use mostly during the summertime. The one I'm about to pull out right now is the one that I use like during the fall and the spring. Um, if I'm hauling something, stuff like that. It works really, really good. And to be honest with you guys, it's been about two years since I've saddled up the horses. And I've actually was talking to a friend of mine today and I really miss it. I miss the quietness of it and the adventure of going with them. And it's just, I don't know, it's hard to explain. So I'm gonna go pull the other buggy out right now, but it's gonna be pretty dirty too. Yeah, I'll have to give you guys a buggy tour. Ha! So, let me tell you guys a little bit about what happened. Greg showed up, 
and we got some things done around the shop down there. I'm actually gonna take you guys down there right now and show you what we got done. And then I got some more stuff cleaned out of the barn. And then we had some talking to do. We had to do some measuring for the solar panels to see how we were gonna position them on the roof. And then some other things that we had to do and it kind of ate up the day. And now you can see the sun's going down and you know, it's gonna be time to wrap up this video. <laughs> So let me go put this bucket away. You guys watch them for a second, and then I'll take you a little bit closer to the coachins and the ducks and everybody, and you can just see uh, how they do. And look at Maggie just standing in there with everybody, and she's not chasing anyone. All right, you good? Let's go over there and check them out. It's always a joy at night. Everyone's back. Look at the little coachings. Aren't they just so cute? They are so darling. Just love watching them. And the funny thing is, is remember the $50 chicken coop was right here? Well, we actually took them out of the $50 chicken coop and we put them in the house and we let them out the next morning. The next morning they came out with everybody. They did fine. Then Mr. Bossy Turkey Man started messing with the little coaching. But the other coaching and all the babies, they stayed inside the chicken house. And then all that stuff went on and then they came out of the chicken house. And then all they did was walk over and they wanted to keep going back in the old coop. <laughs> Until they get a little bigger, the babies, we're going to go ahead and let them stay in the other coop. But, I mean, nobody gives them any business. Those two coachins are probably the toughest chickens in the, in the chicken yard. They do not take any business, and they are the best moms ever. So if you guys are looking for a chicken breed, and you haven't considered the coachins, then somebody hasn't been giving you good information. Now, they're not big egg layers or anything like that, but if you have big egg layers, They'll lay on eggs until they turn gold. They're in, they don't mess around, they go broody like nobody's business. So every chicken coop, every chicken yard, everybody who has chickens should have some cochins uh, to just do that, to raise up eggs. They'll raise anybody's eggs, they could care less. They'll sit on them the whole time and they are great mamas. And there's the duck ducks. It looks out pretty good. Those little cochins are so cute. And they just stick together. They just look how they stick together like that. I guess you could say that's one of the joys of free range chickens. We get to uh, enjoy them moving about all day, but when they come home at night, it is something kind of cool. There's those guineas. They are kind of loud at night. You know, some people think they're loud all the time, but they're really not. They're just like a hen, pretty much. I mean, they, they do their squawking at particular times of the day, and if somebody comes around, but I mean, they're not all the time just being squawky. All right, I'm gonna take you guys over here and show you what we got done inside the um, learning center, and I'm gonna give you a sneak peek at the hot water tank. First things we got done, 
was we got the new motion light up. We got the new motion light up. Hey, we got the new motion light up. Hello. Light, it's easy. That way it clicks on when I walk around here and if I want to shut it off, I put a switch inside that can shut it off. All right, show you guys what happened on the inside of the shop today. Turn some lights on for you. All right, we got that track lighting in. That wasn't here, so that worked out pretty good. We got that front light on. Is that on right now? Oh, look at there, it's on right now. Nice. Okay, and we also uh, went and got our Amish hot water heater. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys all this when, when we get it all hooked up for right now. It's just here right now, it's not hooked up. I haven't done anything with it. I just wanted to set it here and get it out of the way. So I'm actually pretty excited about hooking this up and showing you guys how it's gonna work. We're actually gonna have a sink right here, so we'll be able to have hot water sink right here. And then in this room is our bathroom, I showed you that before. And that's where we're gonna have a hot water shower for the winter time. And we don't really take really hot water showers, uh, but in the winter time, you know, we're just not taking cold showers all the time. We do take cold showers 80% of the time we take showers, they're cold like cold, and then other than that, they're like, you know, warm, or kind of warm, you know what I mean? So the hot water is just basically to take the bite out and to have a little hot water here at the sink. All right, so I've been working hard on the root cellar as well. I'm like, what I'm doing basically right now is I have like several different projects going on, and I am kind of bouncing in between all of them. And with the solar power, we'll be hooking that up pretty soon, so stay tuned for those videos. Um, I just have to get the clips. Um, I have everything else pretty much here, and this inverter will be here. Um, it's supposed to be the 23rd or something, so it's like Thursday or Friday of this week. So I'll show you guys the inverter that I had to get, and then I'm going to start explaining to you guys and unwinding uh, the solar power system, the panels, and the wattages, and all this kind of technical stuff that makes your eyes glaze over and scares a lot of you, to be honest with you. <laughs> and some of you people, it's no problem, you know, solar power, no big deal. But a lot of people, it's like, you know, this electricity stuff and hooking all that up, it could get kind of, you know, nerve-wracking, make you a little nervous. Okay. And the, the goal is that I need to have the project up front capped off and the solar-powered workshop done by the Homesteaders of America Conference October um, in Virginia. So, <laughs> stay tuned and see if Doug will accomplish his goal. Uh, always, thanks for showing up and watching our videos. We do appreciate it. We're back to putting up regular videos for you guys. If you didn't watch yesterday's video about uh, Stacy walking through the garden and basically building a medicine chest and then showing you how to make that medicine, you just missed out on a really good video. So thanks a lot for watching the videos. I'm gonna go actually take a cold shower and you guys don't wanna see that one. And we'll see you guys on the next video.